Hey David Brewster here again, another three for all, and this is three Michael Schenker licks. And definitely Michael Schenker is a hard rock and metal guitar legend. Um, he's been around for a very long time, and just the list of people that he influenced directly is impressive. Um, you know, the biggest name I think there is Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes loved Michael Schenker, and so much so that when Randy passed away, Ozzy actually invited Michael to join, you know, Ozzy's band. And he kind of turned it down. I think uh, some of the lure of, you know, the Prince of Darkness, I think, kind of scared, you know, Michael Schenker because he was already kind of battling with some of his own demons. As far as his music, uh, there's no denying, you know, Michael Schenker is a, a force to be reckoned with. You know, I mean, he, for a lot of guitarists, you know, he introduced, you know, aggressive phrasing and playing with conviction and really digging in, you know, the bends. And these rapid fire, you know, pentatonic licks that he uh, that he played on UFO and MSG songs. But aside from you know some of the phrasing and the you know the feel that he had when he played, he also introduced you know the natural minor scale and you know unusual tonalities to a whole generation of guitarists. You know, people like Randy Rhodes and Kirk Hammett. And here's actually a list of you know just ten guitarists that are big names that were directly influenced and love Michael Schenker. Well, the first example here is really more of a riff than a lick. And this is from Captain Nemo, which is on the Built to Destroy album from 83, uh, the Michael Schenker group, or MSG. And, uh, you know, it's a really interesting guitar part. And it's not really a lick, per se. It's more of a riff. And you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between a riff and a lick? You know, in my mind, or in my world, you know, a riff is a repetitive musical phrase, something that you hear over and over, you know, repeated. Now, a lick is really just kind of a snapshot or a little piece of something that you hear, like maybe a little, you know, phrase or a, a moment from a guitar solo or a little melodic, you know, section of a song. So it's really just kind of a little picture or a little snippet of something, whereas a riff is a self-contained, repeated figure of music. Or at least that's how I like to look at it. Captain Nemo actually has this opening kind of chord where it's like a sustained A. And you'll hear like some pick scrapes, and then eventually uh, this riff comes in. So it's this busy, unorthodox, uh, kind of open string, uh, single note riff that he's uncovered. And um, it's really, unorthodox and, and weird, you know, when you first try this lick. And the important thing to remember is that it starts with a, a 16th note triplet, and then the rest of the phrase, it's all 16th notes, and it's just pushing through until it repeats again. It sounds something like this. <laughs> Now I'm going to slow that down so you can really kind of see and hear what's going on. So slowly... And that's just weird. You know, it's basically flirting with like an A7 um, tonality. And rhythmically, it's a very unusual uh, phrase. So you've got this little, which that first half is really bizarre. And then right there, you're kind of doing this little cascading open string thing. But the timing, once again, is, is really bizarre and unusual. I'm just going to use my foot to kind of keep time here. The next example is from Into the Arena, which is from the 1980 uh, album uh, The Michael Schenker Group. And this is probably one of Michael's most famous, you know, guitar compositions or, 
you know, songs. Uh, you know, he did have a lot of popular music with UFO. He had, uh, you know, an album he appeared on like back in 72 with the Scorpions. But really, uh, in 1980, when the Michael Schenker Group album came out, he just kind of exploded. He was already a legend, you know, all over the world. People knew who he was. It wasn't just, you know, people in Germany uh, by that point. But that album definitely helped him just kind of become, you know, a, a sensation, you know, at that, that moment. So Into the Arena is another instrumental uh, song of his. The lick I've isolated here from this song um, there's actually an interesting thing happening with the chord progression because it moves uh, basically like to a D7 or a D major and then it resolves to G minor. So if you saw the harmonic minor uh, chord play episode I recently did, um, here's this you know major 5 to a minor 1 progression happening all over again. But it's what Michael does over that major 5 chord that's really interesting. Um, and in case you're not, you know, uh, aware of what this means, you know, a minor one to a major five, you know, implies a harmonic minor. So when the when the song reaches that D seven or that D chord, um, he does a D eleven arpeggio, but he found this really cool way to play it. way he kind of slides through uh, the arpeggio. Now I did find kind of a logical fingering, which I'm pretty sure Michael Schenker didn't play it the way I just played it there. I think he kind of used mainly his first three fingers. Like that. I just modified his fingering to something more like this. cool phrase and right there it's really cool if you hear the resolution from that D to the G minor and you can definitely hear how it resolves uh, after that arpeggio which is so cool you know, something like that all right the last lick here actually comes from the song rock bottom which uh, the lick that I've chose actually comes from the live version of this song so the song Rock Bottom was recorded by the band UFO, which Michael Schenker was a member of. And this was actually recorded on the album Phenomenon, which is from 1974. Now the live album Strangers in the Night by UFO, which was 1979, that's a very famous live, you know, kind of Michael Schenker uh, moment. And there's a, you know, live version of this song on there, and you can catch that lick uh, that I'm going to show you here on that album. And you can also find, you know, other live versions of that tune. Um, I even saw a version of Benny Moore playing it with UFO, um, you know, and that was just from a few years ago. And even during his performance of the song, near the end, he still included this lick. But for me as a musician and also as an educator and a writer, and I'm also a big history buff, I love to trace things back to the source. Like, where did this come from? Whether it's a lick or a chord or a progression or you know, uh, a concept, you know, in music. So, um, I find it really interesting that Randy Rhodes himself was directly influenced by Michael Schenker. He was a big Schenker fan. And then you started to hear some of these little pull-off licks, um, in Michael Schenker's music. And then all of a sudden, uh, especially when Randy started working with Ozzy, which he was already doing with Quiet Riot, but when he started working with Ozzy and you heard, you know, Flying High Again and Mr. Crowley and some of those songs, you heard these rapid fire pull off licks, which I am basically going to go ahead and say Randy Rhodes picked that up directly from Michael Schenker. For this section of Rock Bottom, there's a chord progression happening underneath this part. And it's just moving from C to B to E minor to G, something like this. <laughs> I just basically played power chords, but it's giving you, you know, that sound. But then uh, on top of each chord, he's basically doing these little pull-off arpeggio patterns on the, the high E and B string. So over the C, he's basically outlining C major there just with E, C, and G on uh, the B and high E. And then he just basically moves down a half step for B. 
And then when it goes to E, he moves up to the 12th and 15th fret there and does uh, implied, you know, E minor arpeggio. And then he moves all the way up to the 15th and 19th fret there to outline G. You definitely want a nice clean separation, you know, between those notes. And there you can either use, like I was saying, like your index finger can kind of lift up. Or you could also do some sort of, you know, like kind of palm muting with your right hand too to kind of silence that B string. Like that. Like you can still hear the note, but it's not going to ring. That's going to wrap up this look at three licks from Michael Schenker, but definitely check out, you know, his work with UFO and MSG, and even sneak back and check out the old uh, Scorpion album, uh, Lonesome Crow, which uh, caught me off guard, uh, you know, earlier this week when I listened to it, and I was like, what in the world? Um, you know, it was not what I expected. Definitely someone like Michael Schenker, you know, he deserves, you know, a lot of uh, praise and attention and respect because he influenced and showed the way. Uh, for so many important guitarists so he's definitely a pioneer you know a legendary you know player and um, I honestly feel there should be more people you know uh, kind of showing their respect and paying respect to him because you know he's a living legend so if you uh, if you happen to catch him on tour I think he's actually on tour this year um, go see Michael Schenker um, he'll blow you away please leave some comments and some feedback and please subscribe to late night lessons and I'll be back with some more content before you know it thank you